Did you know? The Bible says, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not love, I am only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move a mountain, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not love, I gain nothing. The Bible says of everything that will remain, the greatest thing is love. It's the top, the most important. Now ask yourself this, what is most lacking in churches everywhere? Sadly, it's love. Churches have an abundance of prophecy. Churches have an abundance of faith, maybe misplaced at times, but still. Churches excel at giving to the poor, but the church as a whole, Christianity as a whole, does poorly when it comes to love. We are like clanging symbols to the world, just a bunch of noise. Not every church, and of course, I'm not speaking about your church, but the church in general. Somehow we dismiss ourselves like we get a pass. We excuse our lack of love as if it's justified and righteous. But the Bible is pretty clear. Love is the greatest of all. In Matthew 22, the disciples asked, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second and equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Everything we know is based on love, but yet we have so little of it. Seriously, I'm not just trying to bash the church. God is trying to help us here. It says, love God with all your heart. That's number one to God, but yet we put a whole lot of things in front of this one. It should be number one, but we put it way down the list. I'd like to ask a priest how many people come into the confessional weekly and confess that they didn't love God enough that week. Probably pretty low, if it's even on the list. It just shows you what we think is important. I'm sure they hear, well, I cussed too much, drank too much, was mean to my parents, I lied, I had bad thoughts, and so on. But I think they rarely hear, I just didn't love God or my neighbor enough this week. Loving God with all our hearts just isn't really acceptable in our society. Loving sports with all our hearts, sure. Loving food, of course, we can post all we want about that. But loving God, that's kind of weird to talk about. We should keep that to ourselves. This needs to be broken off of us. It's not weird to love God with all of our hearts. It should be the norm. But yet, it's such a rare thing to see. Look at most churches. Do you really see people loving God with all their heart? Or do you just see religious obligation? Good people trying to live a good life. When was the last time you actually saw someone loving God with all their hearts? If we do see this, we probably judge that person and think they are foolish and emotional. We look down on them. We are so much more contained. Can't they be too? I just don't see a lot of with all their hearts in church. As a whole, we do very little God-related things with all of our hearts. But we can yell at each other with all of our hearts. We're good at that. We can write nasty letters to companies with all of our hearts. We can gossip and talk about people behind their backs with all of our hearts. But love God with all of our heart? Yeah, not so much. And forget about the second one. If we can't get the first one right, there's very little chance we can actually pull off the second one to love our neighbor as ourselves. We tend to love ourselves, sure, but struggle in actually loving our neighbor. We are great at loving ourselves. Was that one of the options? We should get a star for that one. But seriously, love our neighbor? Kind of, I guess. If they fit our criteria. If they look the part. The Bible says love your neighbor. But we here, love the neighbor we agree with. The one we like. And I don't even want to bring up the next one. God even goes one step further in Matthew 5. But I say unto you, love your enemies and pray for them that persecute you. <laughs> what? What kind of heathen Bible version are you using? That can't be in there. But see for yourself, that we even have to love our neighbor is bad enough, but our enemies? God, ugh, why is this so hard? Why is Christianity so difficult? 
Why can't we just love ourselves, God? It would be so much easier. Joking aside, it's difficult and hard, but why? Well, because we lack love. Just be honest. You know it's true. Look at Christians. Sure, you'll hear stories of them helping the poor, but then you see post after post on social media of Christians attacking and tearing down each other. Christians hurting others, all in the name of religion. We are good at tearing down and being hateful. Can that be number one gone? We are fooling ourselves to think that we could possibly really love God, who we can't see, with all of our hearts, when we can't even love those around us, who we do see. Our hearts simply aren't filled with love. We aren't good at love, we just aren't, because we haven't allowed our hearts to truly be transformed by love. We try to be Christians the best we can while missing the key ingredient. We neglect love. God loves so much, even though we don't deserve it. Shouldn't we do likewise to others? Well, yes, of course, but most of us don't have the capacity to do so. We don't have it in us. We can't just go out and try to be kinder to people without really addressing our hearts. The Bible says, out of the abundance of our hearts, the mouth speaks. Just check what's coming out of your mouth to tell what's abundantly in your heart. Stop. Don't make excuses. Just change what you have an abundance of. Out of the abundance of love in his heart, God sent his only son to this world to save it. Not because we deserve it, and not because we earned it, but because he loved. Out of love, he gave us something even though we were enemies to him. The Bible says we love because he first loved us. But most of us have never really encountered God's love in such a way that it transforms our hearts. God's love is so vast and deep and amazing and wonderful. How sad it is for us as Christians that we allow ourselves to experience so very little of it. No wonder we struggle with love so much. We need to open our hearts up to God's love and actually let it come in. Once you truly experience it, it's hard not to love. Start turning your efforts towards Him, not towards being a better person, not towards getting everything right, but start to pour love in His direction. The greatest thing we can do every day is love God with everything we are, with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, and with all of our strength. And out of that effort, everything else will flow.